Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to do issue two of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles The Last Ronin by IDW, um, made by Kevin Eastman and Andy Kuhn. Um, cool cover, by the way. So we continue where we, uh, where we left off, so let's dive right in. And uh, we go a, a little bit to the past. And we see uh, April and um, Casey. Uh, they are waiting for the turtles because they are invited them for a meal. And uh, it seems that Casey proposed uh, to April. And they are worrying why they are so late. And then um, Raphael comes in all bloodied. And uh, he says that he, uh, he and the other turtles were ambushed and that... Um, Master Splinter is being hurt by uh, by the foot soldiers, so they bring him in. But also, uh, yeah, um, April is waking up, and we see beautiful looking art. I, I I mean, look at this! All these great detail uh, around, and of course in the bed, you know, with the sheets. It's very well done. Props to the artist, and. Um, so yeah, they talk about uh, you know what happened that they're being ambushed, and um, they want revenge. Well, a couple of them, not all of them, and um, so it seems that uh, Leonardo um, says that um, he says I turned the last of them back into the subway, looking like they look like they might be running towards their uh, towards the east side to their master. Um, but uh, Casey says, what about the truce, Leo? Um, thought we got past all that with them. And um, he says, honestly, I'm surprised it lasted as long as it did. And then even Master Splinter says, uh, while lying on the table, this war, just a matter of time. Oroku against Hamato, always. Um, Karai, try to end it once and for all. And, um, and then Casey says, where's Ralph? And uh, Ralph is gone. Because he just wants to have revenge. And then back to the, well, present, also known as the future. Um, April waking up and uh, he, has, he is putting on her prosthetics because he lost an arm and a leg. Um, the last time that she saw the turtles. And then uh, this happens. And then she says, um, oh, a little bit. She says, uh, hey, Casey, little help here. But there's no one around, only, you know, Casey's mask and his hockey sticks um, suggesting that, uh, well, I believe he's dead. I mean, there was, I believe, the established, uh, you know, the, the last issue. Um, then Mikey, Michelangelo, is, uh, you know, uh, in the kitchen and he is uh, making some tea and he talks to his fallen brothers. He sees... I believe it's all in his mind. He sees their images, their ghosts, their conversations. And, um, and the brothers are, uh, you know, talking to themselves. They're arguing. And, um, yeah, Mikey is, is getting mad. And he yells at them. But then in the end, there's nobody there. But then he calms himself, making the tea. And then um, the brothers come back. And he uh, says, let's, let's have a toast. I will finish what we started, what Master Splinter raised us to do, the last Oroku. And uh, so, yeah, they're having a toast, although these are not real. Very cool. Well, very well done. Uh, we go back to the uh, past again, and then we see, uh, wait a minute, who's that? Uh, just give me a sec. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not all familiar with all these characters. Oh, yeah, Raf Raphael. Raphael wants to have revenge and he seeks out the, the Foot Clan and they uh, probably to their hideout or in the neighborhood. And then this woman here gives a speech. I gave you one simple command. Kill the mutants. And now you have the utter gall to return here to nurse your own pathetic wounds and wallow in your own failure. This will not stand. I must finish what we have started. The truce between Foot and Hamato clans has been broken. Blood has been spilled. Um, and she reminds me of, uh, I mean, she looks basically like uh, Electra from Marvel. Um, not the same face, but, you know, uh, it's a little bit bright here. Just let me uh, close a little bit 
reduces the light. So yeah, this is way better. Um, so Rev comes here and he starts killing everyone. And he's in, in some kind of a frenzy. And um, he says, so we just destroy the beast. And he says, bring it. And the action is freaking cool. Uh, he, go, he goes nuts, man. I mean, look at this, all this great art. I hope you see it. There's still a little too much light in here, I, I see, but uh, I, I cannot reduce it any more than this. Um, and yeah, he says, uh, uh, you ambushed my family, killed my father. Only one way this ends. And he's being stabbed, he's being cut, he's been maimed, he's been beaten. And uh, he's still going. I mean, I didn't know that the, the turtles were so resilient. And... Um, but then eventually this, this woman steps in and he says, uh, so stop behind your uh, behind the scrubs if you finish this once and for all. And he says, yes, we will. And they are starting attacking each other. And uh, again, action looks freaking cool. And I believe that this is the woman, the mother of the, the main bad guy in issue one. He is also coming in this issue for a short bit. And um, so they are fighting to the death. Um, he says, my soldiers have failed to take you out mutant or take your head, but I will not. And they fall. I mean, she, he, he picks her up and does a, yeah, I call it a uh, wrestle move. And he, they fall into the bay and uh, they, they, they're still going at it. So cool. I mean, mostly in, in, in modern comics, yes, although this is a modern comic, uh, the action scenes, two, maybe three pages, that's it. But this goes on, and, and we see all these this crazy moves, and no, uh, either side is try to, you know, get the kill. Um, so there is so there's no, you know, uh, one is overpowering the other. I mean, they are equally strong, and I like that. Um, but at the end, um, they stab each other, and, and he is falling down over, you know, well, not drowning because he's a turtle, I guess. But uh, she is being picked up by, I don't know, maybe um, the Foot Clan. They're, they're, they're her subordinates. I'm not entirely sure. And then we go back to um, to the present again. And he says, Michelangelo, what the hell are you doing? And you should be resting. And, um, and then uh, they have a chat with each other. They talk about what happens, but also some... Um, uh, Michael Lynch is a little bit weirded out that she has prosthetics and um, he says, yeah, sorry. And he also doesn't know how he uh, survived the whole thing. But uh, April has a uh, answer to that because um, I'm no data teller, she says, but it doesn't take a genius to see your mutation has progressed over the years. You're bigger, stronger, and you're healing amazingly fast. And that's one of the reasons that he survived that fall from that very 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 tall building uh somehow so yeah he has uh great healing powers now but he says not all is well my head it's still so fuzzy still don't know where I, how i got here back to the lair and she says hold that thought and it says casey breakfast and i thought to myself wait what casey's is he still alive and 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 michael and just has the same thought he said what casey's still alive too are you reading my mind, Michelangelo? But then uh, it's not Casey. It's her daughter. And she introduces to him Casey Marie Jones. Uh, look at all these fantastic looking detail in the background. And in front of. I mean, it's again, props to the artist. Also, look at this, this prosthetic, how much detail there is in it. Man, I, I just love detail. So she introduces herself and... Um, he says, we, uh, we kind of already met, and it seems that she has saved him because he wanted to kill himself, you know, doing seppuku. And um, you are um, a lot less conscious and more bloody uh, at that time. And, um, but she also says that, um, I mean, look at, look at the posture on her face. And he says, uh, Casey, he says, yeah, that's me. And you're supposed to be the funny one, right? Uh, so they're having a lot of catching up to do. And uh, she says that they only know him from childhood stories, basically saying that, uh, well, she, she admires him. And, and you know, uh, because um, April tells it in such a way that they are 
like mythical heroes or something. Uh, then we go to the bad guy. He's been training and he's been, uh, you know, being hit by one of his, uh, his, his minion subordinates. And he says, excellent strike, almost masterful. Unfortunate for you. And so he cheats and he slices him up. He slices his throat. This lesson has ended. Clean up this mess. Mess. Come, Captain Fukuda. So he asked about the, the, oh, the mutants, right? And said that if, if they found a turtle. And uh, so the captain says no, because the, um, the, 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 the trail went cold and um, he disappeared. But then uh, he says um, uh, that they are going to do a shift. I don't know what it is, but it, according to uh, this guy, he says, a chef master? Yeah, I want to do uh, all our troops engaged in a full crackdown on the city inside and out. And once we capture the filthy creature, we will destroy it with extreme public prejudices. Prejudices? Prejudices? So something like that. And um, he also says that if he's not, in, not doing what he says or, you know, finish the mission successfully um, because he's now a new race captain... The price for failing me again will be the same as your predecessors. It's a little bit macabre here. So, uh, yeah, very nice. Uh, meanwhile, uh, April and her daughter and, uh, and Mikey um, talk, have, you know, they have eaten and, um, and they talk where they are. It seems that New York City has been cut up into districts. You have the bottom, the middle and the below. And uh, the below, uh, that is where they are now. And they call it, it's rock bottom. And um, and there's a, a lot of people, there are, you know, resistance fighters, etc. And um, so uh, Casey shows um, Mikey around and she, uh, and she, you know, repeats a little bit what I said before. Blows my mind to be standing here with you. I heard so many stories and mom showed me some of the old photos. You guys were practically like storybook heroes to me. I even tried to learn as much martial arts as I could, on my own mostly. So yeah, she, she is not a strong female modern character. No, she's actually training to become better and stronger, but she's not invincible, right? She is not instantly amazing, like they do in the other comics. <laughs> and uh, she, she talks about old videotapes that, that she used, and uh, she talks about... Revealing the weapons of the turtles. He says, I know some of the history too. Things like Bushido and Seppuku. And uh, Michelangelo is a little bit ashamed of that. She said, these are very personal to me. Thank you. And um, she said, I understand why you know the honor of it. Talk about Seppuku. And uh, he says, did you sing, say anything about your mom? He says, no, nothing. Things have been pretty rough the last few years. So... To see a little bit of hope in her eyes, well, he says, thanks again. Yeah, and that's a nice gesture. And um, so they still talk about, you know, uh, about the past, and that, uh, about what she's done and um, that she's reading a journal and, and learning techniques, uh, life lessons. And um, then she says, where have you been all this time? And um, Mikey says, after all this bad stuff that happened to me, it was too much to handle. So, and then we see a flashback, but with a completely different art style. And I didn't see that coming. Now, to be honest, I don't think this art is, belongs in here. I mean, when it comes to the flashback scenes. But on the other hand, I don't dislike it at all. I mean, the story is pretty nice. He ta basically tells the story that he needs to get away from... In New York, so he goes into the mountains, but he wasn't prepared about the cult. And since he is a uh, cold-blooded creature, he didn't stand a chance. So he thought he was going to die, but somehow his his body survived, and uh, his and it would not die. And then when spring came, um, he starts to learn to meditate, and um, he says, "I read and reread Father's book." looking for some kind of balance, maybe even final peace. And, uh, but then the real world found him again, and they, uh, they say, monster, freak, kill it. And then um, he goes nuts and, uh, because they want to kill him, and then 
Well, we see a battle. And he says, um, when I saw the look of their faces, laughing, taking a life just to, just to take a life for fun, no honor. That's when I got mad, really mad. We raised with respect and honor, trained from birth for redemption for our family. That was my destiny on the battlefield to the end. And then uh, we also see that he's been training again, uh, reading every martial book that he can, you know, get a, you know, that he can uh, read um, to learn and master all forms of martial arts, to adapt every challenge, every form of combat. It was the last of my, I was the last of my clan, masterless, Ronin. And it, oops, and it was up to me to restore our family honor. I really like that. So this, this whole art thing wasn't intrusive or distracting. Uh, I was just, you know, a little bit surprised that they did this kind of art in here. But I don't mind because the storytelling is so good. And it has been shown in, in, in a very cool way. Um, so, yeah, don't mind it at all. And, um, and then he, he talks about that he's coming back to the mainland uh, for revenge. And then we, you know, he goes back to... Uh, to Casey, uh, he says, to complete my master's mission, kill the last Roku and this last page. What does it mean? No, and it says no peace. It says it means I still got work to do. Good, because my guru is going to help you. And he says, no, 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 I, I don't appreciate the offer. But uh, <laughs> she's just stubborn as her father. Um, she says, because I wasn't asking. I wouldn't even be standing here if it wasn't for us. Uh, you wouldn't even be standing. I'm sorry. And uh, we, got the, we got trouble coming now that you steered things up. So if you don't want to help taking out Hiroto, then stand in line. And then he smirks. He says, what's so funny? Just try and decide if you're just more like your dad or your mother. And then we see this last shot of April taking something out of, the, out of a, a vault or a, this thing. What I, what I spontaneously forgot what the name is. Um, so yeah, pretty cool. This is going to be in the last issue. Also, fucking cool cover. Uh, I like their last run in a lot. Um, yeah, turtles are cool. I um, I didn't know that I would, uh, you know, that would be so such a good read uh, because I don't know, still don't know much about the whole history about the turtles. Uh, I think if after this this whole event. I'm going to pick up more turtle books and uh, see what's going on. Oh, also, before I forget, um, <laughs> um, there, there was a cool, let me, uh, wait a minute. I, I, I wanted to show you. Uh, is it here? Nope. Uh, is it here? Oh, yeah. So, um, wait a minute. What's his name? Why am I forgetting all these names? I'm so sorry. Uh, oh yeah, Raphael. Raphael says, uh, I says, um, my, uh, Casey says, screw that. Come on, Raph. <laughs> Let's make sure Leo got clear too. Damn straight. It's body count time, he says. And I remember there is a total box called Body Count, and I believe it has Simon Bisley's art in it. And it was freaking awesome. Uh, I need to get that book. Uh, I don't mind if I'm getting the trade paper book, but yeah. <laughs> I, I like this small reference because I accidentally remember there is a body count turtle book that is actually freaking great. So, uh, yeah, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you like the video and I see you next time. Bye bye.